In this video, I'm going to show you how to save hundreds of dollars by making teriyaki steak at home using the exact ingredients they use at all Benihana restaurants for a fraction of the cost of what you'd spend at a Japanese steakhouse. Now, if you've seen the hibachi steak video, you basically already know the process, but there's one slight modification and two ingredients we'll need to add to get it just right. So let's hop into the recipe. All right, really quickly before we get started, I wanna go over the most common mistake almost everyone makes when preparing teriyaki steak at home. And I realize I constantly harp on this in my videos, but it seems like nearly every recipe online instructs you to cut up your steak before cooking. And while it is true smaller pieces of protein do cook faster because you're increasing surface area, what people don't realize is because of the smaller pans and less powerful stovetops we're using at home, a lot of the time the meat will release more liquid and end up boiling in its own juices instead of getting a nice sear, which is what we're going for in hibachi cooking. So to fix this, we're going to do what they do at pretty much every Japanese steakhouse and keep our steaks whole and slice them up only after they've cooked. This will allow us to do two things. First, Get a nice sear, which improves both texture and flavor. And second, get clean, precise cuts like you see at teppanyaki restaurants. Now, when you order teriyaki steak, you're almost always getting choice grade strip steak. Also known as New York strip, it's a steak cut from the short loin subprimal of the cow. Typically, the restaurants hand cut steaks on the premises, and the serving size is usually around 6 to 8 ounces or 170 to 225 grams. I found that by asking my butcher to cut steaks that are 3 quarters of an inch or roughly 2 centimeters thick, you almost always get the perfect size. Now, just like hibachi steak, teriyaki steak is typically served with sautéed mushrooms, but the teriyaki version also has sautéed green onions. So to prep the scallions, you'll want to trim off the green tops and the root end. Then we'll take the middle section and further cut it in half. So we have pieces roughly one inch long. Then heat up some oil over medium high heat in a nonstick pan. They typically use safflower oil at hibachi restaurants, but any neutral oil will work. When the pan is hot, add the onions and a sprinkle of salt and saute until you have a bit of caramelization. Because we'll be adding these to the dish at the end, you want them to be mostly cooked but still have a bit of crunch to them. Then remove the onions from the pan and set in a container until you're ready to use. For the mushrooms, we'll be slicing two per steak. Now there are two ways they are prepared for this dish and which one you get really just depends on which prep cook is working that day. The first way is your standard slice, like this, and you're looking for about six to eight pieces per mushroom. The second way is to cut each cap into quarters and then to slice each quarter in half, which will give you this look. So for this cut, take each cap and slice the mushroom down the middle. Then lay each half cut side down and make another slice down the middle. And then cut each quarter in half. And it should look something like this. Now heat up some oil in a nonstick pan over medium high heat, and after the pan is hot, add the mushrooms and a sprinkle of salt and cook until they're done to your liking. You'll just want to make sure they've given up all their liquid and are completely cooked. When you're done, put the mushrooms in a container and set aside. For the steak, heat up some oil in a pan over medium high heat. After the pan is hot, season the meat with salt on both sides, and if you have a fat cap, hold it down in the hot oil for one to two minutes so it gets crispy. If you like fat, this will ensure that it's not inedibly chewy. At most teppanyaki restaurants, they'll cut the fat off before serving, so crisping it will also make it easier to slice off at the end, if you prefer that. Now set the steak down in the pan and cook anywhere from two to five minutes, depending on how well done you want it. After you've got a nice sear on one side, flip it over and get a nice sear on the other side, an additional two to five minutes. My advice would be to slightly undercook the steak because we'll be cutting it into bite-sized strips later and you can finish the cooking then. Now remove the pan from the heat and set the steak on a grated baking sheet to rest for 5 to 10 minutes. This will allow the juices in the meat to redistribute better than just cutting it while it's on the heat like they do at hibachi restaurants. After your steak has rested, you can remove the fat if you want. Now, instead of cutting our meat into bite-sized pieces like we did with the hibachi steak recipe, we're going to cut our teriyaki steak into julienne strips like this. So take your steak, and depending on how wide it is, make anywhere from 2 to 4 slices lengthwise down the meat. Then take the strips, turn them 90 degrees, and make perpendicular cuts to them. Preparing the meat in this manner will give you the exact julienne slice used at most teppanyaki restaurants. After you've dealt with the steak, wipe out your pan and return it to medium heat. After the meat has rested, add it to the hot pan. And if it's slightly underdone, cook it to your liking, and approximately 1 minute before it's finished, add the mushrooms, the scallions, and one tablespoon of garlic butter. If you'd like to learn how to make hibachi garlic butter, I'll link to the video at the end. 
Season with salt and pepper and stir until all the butter has melted and coated the steak and vegetables. Now add the teriyaki sauce. If you'd like to learn how to make Benihana's teriyaki sauce, I'll also link to that video at the end. There's not really a set amount, but I found that about one quarter cup to one third of a cup, or 60 to 80 milliliters of teriyaki sauce is usually sufficient for one steak. Give it a good stir, and as soon as the teriyaki sauce is heated through, kill the heat. Be careful because there's a lot of sugar in teriyaki so it's very easy to scorch and the sauce will get really bitter if it burns. And that's it. That's the exact recipe used at all Benihana restaurants. Now the dish is ready to be served just like this, without any additional garnishes. By resting our steaks and making everything at home, it should give you a more consistent result than you can get at almost any hibachi restaurant, all while saving you some serious coinage. If you'd like to learn the exact recipe for Benihana's teriyaki sauce and hibachi garlic butter, make sure to check out these videos. And if you'd like to learn some more hibachi at home recipes, make sure to check out this playlist. Thanks for watching. See you next time.